Okay, thank you very much. Um, do we have any apologies? Thank you very much. And moving on to item two, this is declaration of interest and dispensations. Um, have we had any um, written? Do we have any um, dispensations for declaration of interest? We have to yes. I just want to point out my district council report. I do refer to the systems of Vice Bureau, who I do know that um, legislation is for growth. I don't think it's cute, cute, but um, just to know. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to item three then. And I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to invite Inspector Andrews to um, give her report further. So, thank you. Excuse me, one slide can make it the last two times for the commitment. I did actually have some leave in August. Um, so I'll come back feeling refreshed. Right, so summer, as expected, has been very busy in the new forest. There has been a rise of spine. This is what we expected because of the staycation, more footfall in the new forest, and also the Isle of Wight. So probably the two main holiday destinations in Hampshire um, and it's also a tricky time for policing because obviously it's a popular time for officers to take their annual leave as well and also we are covering sort of the neighbourhood teams are covering responsible patrol and albeit we have increased our um, police officers with the uplift they're still being trained so you know it's all work in progress um, so busy summer as I said um, the things that have been happening, increasing theft on motor vehicles. Again, this is seasonal. This is campsite for all our parts I've spoken about for the capital six and both of them. Um, however, saying that, we have had a couple of good arrests. One, one in particular who was charged with um, about five or six offences from theft on motor vehicles and burglaries. And this was a criminal from Southampton. And they do seem to come from Southampton. I think they think New Forest is easily shipping. And rarely do we catch people in the app. And this is why I know I sound like a broken record when I say, please report to us. This individual, he wasn't caught in the app, but there were lots of little pieces like a jigsaw puzzle where we caught, say, parcel index from his car, CCTV, the back of him, CCTV another time, sort of side of him, and all these little things then was enough to when we found out who it was to arrest him and charge him with a number of offences. So this is why I can bang on about reporting things, you know, because then we can build up that picture. But you all know how big the forest is, you know, catching someone in the act. It does happen occasionally, but it's more luck than anything else. So if we can use our investigative skills, we're more likely to get people um, arrested. We've had a lot of bike thefts. Again, unfortunately, there are tourists who come down with their nice expensive bikes. And we do try and work with the campsites, but it's difficult because the campsite owners don't really like to tell the tourists when they come and set up, oh, we've got a pet problem. But we try and work with them and do as best we can. We'd rather um, prevent, you know, at the start, having their bikes stolen. Um, Burglaries, non dwelling burglaries, outbuildings, uh, so, you know, uh, we did see an increase in that. I mean, all these things I'm already seeing declining now in September, and the tourists have, have some of them, most of them have, have gone home. So, even though the summer hasn't looked too good, um, it is looking better, a better picture for September. <coughs> um, a couple of pubs that have been um, mentioned uh, the Glen Public House and Med Bar, which I believe is the club in the town centre. I say club loosely, I think, but that is causing a few issues. I think we've had, I can't remember what time it actually closes, one o'clock or something, but obviously drunken, rowdy individuals. So our licensing team are, are looking at that and speaking to the owners, because basically if they don't um, abide by the conditions, they can have their licence removed. So um, we are aware of those issues. One of our prolific shoplifters, who is continuing still, we, you know, we do so much, send, send him for the call and then he gets released and it's a vicious circle. But there are some banning orders from the shops in Hive, so albeit then he goes to other shops. 
<laughs> you know, but you know, it's some positive. Um, antisocial behaviour. Again, in the summer, I've seen an increase. Probably because the kids have been out as well and, and not going away on holiday, and probably have the same areas that Mike no doubt has. You at wet navy fields, uh, sides away, and at the moor. We've done some stop check with speeding cars and antisocial behaviour with their cars. Um, St Andrew's Community Centre, white water rise underpass. That means there's a uh, um, problem with smoking dope. So all of these are on our patrol plan, as is no doubt with the actors as well. Um, good news is with our arsons, even though at the start of the summer we had a few, but we dealt with the juveniles and it was juveniles, basically been juveniles. Um, so they've been dealt with and the arsons have reduced down. So that's good news. And we're getting a new member of staff, a new PTSO staff later on this month. So the PTSO at Hardly will be up to three, which is then what we should be having. So we have to do down right down to one. So those numbers are up. So that's all good there. So those are the highlights. So all bit busy and busy with crime. Now we're into September. And, and you know, most people are back from leave as well. We are seeing a decrease, so hopefully by the time I come back in next month, it will even be a better picture. So that's the highlights for me. If you've got any questions, um, one of the things we get asked because obviously, when um, hostelries apply for a late opening of license, part of that process is looking at um, this recommendation. Mm -hmm. Um, can we assure residents that that is, that is actually happening as part of the process? So you mentioned two places in particular that, um, that have had a, a, a bit of a spike in yeah. nuisance late at night. Um, will that um, count when those places are applied for licenses um, in the coming months? Yeah, definitely. So the licensing team will visit because, you know, I speak to the licensing team, they see the report, and then they they will speak to the licensee and then give them the chance um, to improve, and then we go from there. So, you know, they're not somebody closed down or anything. It has to be pretty, pretty bad um, incidents for a pub to be closed down. So we take that all on board. But, but there are stages, yeah, right? yeah. conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of and I have got, sorry, I was going to say, what, yeah, I have got one. Bit of good news. Well, it's good news for me. Hopefully, you'll think I'm staying put in my post for about another year, so it just gives some consistency. I think if, if we have that um, in policing, we've probably seeing that with policing, the changes in sergeant inspectors, chief inspectors, it, it, it happens a lot. So, I'll be the good news that I'll be staying put. So, I'm pleased with that. So, hopefully, you are. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Wade. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, but I suppose the news that Chief Inspector Andrews is staying, because I know we work very hard to try and do the best we can with limited resources. I also think it's very good to, good to hear, although you've been very busy, which is a bad thing, but you've been very busy taking action and dealing with issues, and I think the public will be pleased to see it, that we're having that sort of reaction to the police dealing with, with dealing with problems with you smaller than they are compared to other areas that we have here, and that's really good. Um, one question I wanted to ask is something that uh, uh, I think I might have asked you sometime in the past, and I want to uh, what about crime prevention activities? The police used to have <coughs> prevention officers that would go to, to schools and to, to various places and talk to, to, to residents and, and various things, uh, things that they could do to make their property safer and stronger. Um, it, I realise with the reduction in, in manpower, that's something that may have sort of fallen by the wayside. Are there any plans for the police to bring that, that activity back? Because there are a lot of people benefiting from that, the same as the neighbourhood. Yeah. Not really. I mean, we do have crime prevention, but they're for the much bigger things. Yeah. So really, that's to be coming from the PCSOs. So part of their, their role is giving them advice, and they can get advice, you know, from contacting the crime prevention officers. 
but they will give that advice to a lot of um, say households or they weren't necessarily going to schools, things like that. So it has been reduced down, but the PCSO do as much harm prevention as they can. Okay, thank you. So that, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. You know, I'd like to echo when it comes to the ways it's good that we've got here for another year. We know during the pandemic there was an increase in domestic violence, and I think you've mentioned that previously there had been a response whereby you do pop up centres at um, supermarkets. Will that plan continue? Yeah, um, that will still uh, continue, not necessarily just in supermarkets. Yeah. Now other places have opened, we'll, we'll go back to having street meets. Um, in some areas, they do a Costa meet where they're there. It costs people to come and see them, or supermarkets. So those will continue. Is, is there any way the council can promote those meetings where, where they can take place? Yeah, yeah. What I would do, I will, I will get the high um, sergeant to make sure those are advertised for you. Mm -hmm. that up. Thank you. Councillor Williams. Thank you very much. That's my It's been a uh, week's just um, Quick question. Does um, the police have a program with local pubs and clubs where people can go in and give a code name if they feel they're in uh, danger for whatever reason? And if not, is that something that the police would be interested in, in developing more? I appreciate you guys just had to name mm. certain aspects of my life as maybe Southampton or other <coughs> Is that something that they are you thinking along the lines that the pharmacy do? Yeah, so pharmacy and sometimes when you go in and say, yeah, you know, give me a name and give me a name. I mean, what's happening in, in pharmacy? So, I don't know if you're aware, this is national. Uh, some pharmacies are uh, basically you go in, you, you say, I think it's Annie, isn't it? So, there's a word and it's from um, a domestic abuse victim. So, you know, if they can't go anywhere else uh, and they can go into the pharmacy, they say this word and the pharmacist will then contact the police. So I'm not aware of that would be very hard to sort of manage, I'd say, in, 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 in pubs because the turnover of staff and just how it is, whereas the pharmacy is much easier to manage. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Go on. Um, I just had a few uh, inquiries just lately about parking. And I know it's not really something that we call the police about particularly, but these are on junctions and they're on the junction in North Road opposite Lone's Way and opposite Lime Walk. And I noticed it's one opposite Lime Walk, there's actually four cars parked in the line through the bus stop as well. So I did think that it's not actually right that they can do that. Um, and the one opposite Lone's Way, um, numerous residents have brought it to our attention over the last year or so, saying it's dangerous for the children and pulling out. The cars are coming up unexpectedly on the same side of the road as you turn left. There's no thing we can ask you about. Well, to be quite honest, we don't get involved with parking. You know, PTSO, PTSO may do and um, uh, can warn drivers about it, but. Really, I don't know if you have any traffic orders in the high area, do you? Yeah. yeah I, I think the neighbours have all gone around and spoke to the people that are parking there and they just said there's nothing you can do about it. Are they parking <laughs> illegally or just being, um, it's just inappropriate, they're, they're different? So it's just right on the junction, really. Just, you know, what we used to say, don't like park at or near a junction. Mm -hmm. They're just opposite the junction of a quite busy road. So. Um, yeah, I just had letters this week again. Actually, it's a flurry, isn't it? Where people are fed up and yeah. seeing the dangers that they all go back to school. I mean, we get this, this everywhere. There's schools, and there's just no answer to it. You know, we have the PCSOs uh, patrolling around school, schools and doing what they can. Um, and that's all I can say, unfortunately. And we're getting a new ACSO, aren't we, Mike? Are you, are you? Yeah, we. Week one day she starts, so yeah, um, the train's all booked into the 18th of October. Um, so, if you could go ask that. so, what with that, and also our additional PTSO, people a lot more joint working? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, we start from the PTSO in Spain, we've done a number of joint patrols throughout the parish um, with the new PTSOs and the new ACSO coming on board, then we'll increase that 
and the governor's schools have already spoken to uh, Jamie, and he's very happy to set up something there where both the ANCSOs, the PCSOs, and Sophia from the Hand Trust go in into the school to do presentations for them. He's quite happy to get on board with that. Right, okay, that's good then. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, obviously, you're very busy, so I mean, you're welcome to stay, but um, don't feel you have to. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much for your time. So, thank you. I'll see you all. Thank you very much. And 3B, um, this is just the noting. This week we've been um, circulated my Michael's um, report. Okay, everyone happy? Any questions um, arising from that? No? Okay, we'll move on then. So um, we have the minutes of the um, last meeting to approve. So I'll just go through those. Um, If I say page 42, does that make sense? Has everyone got 42 on that? Yeah, okay. Happy with page 42, page 43, page 44, and page 45. Can I have a proposal, please? Thank you. And the second, please? Thank you. And um, can I have a show of um, show of um, what, what, what am I going to say? Um, we were happy to accept these as the true record of the um, meeting. Thank you very much. And, uh, what they mean. Okay, and moving on to chairman's announcements. Which will be most of the briefs. Okay. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking the organisers, the volunteers, the actors, and everyone who made Rock the Pier such a success. Um, it was a really well attended uh, event, and um, from my perspective, it, it looked um, a, a really um, Jolly occasion. I didn't see any 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 sign of any any issues there, and um, it was good to see um, such a wide range of um, people attending and enjoying the event. So um, that's a lot of here. Um, now we had um, uh, Mr. Harrison will be pleased uh, about this one. Um, following your um, question last last meeting about the the Waitrose. Um, car park. Yeah. Um, we've um, had our concerns um, taken up by the district council um, and they are being investigated um, following some, some further information um, from our officers to help them with their deliberations. We haven't got um, any feedback on that at the moment, but we do know that the, um, the matter is being progressed. Okay, thank you. No problem. And also, I would like to thank Beverly, Sue, and the team for their work on the audit, which is um, a mammoth task for um, any council, and it takes up a lot of officer time. Um, but it was a, a very successful audit. We are going to come back, so I won't say more than just um, extending my thanks to the team for, for such a great job. Matt. Thank you. Uh, moving on then, um, I won't forget um, Councillor Wade um, today to do the council work. Do we have a report from Alexis McAvoy? Uh, over to you, Martin, please, for your council. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. Not wrong. Um, I attended the Children and Young People Select Committee, and it dealt with a number of key issues an update from CAMS, Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services, which show they're still not improved their service levels, but are working towards doing so. That was the same message we had last time. However, they are working to recruit more staff and deal with the backlog and delaying both referrals 
and treatment. Uh, we have presentations, updates on fostering uh, and uh, autism, autism commissioning. But the main items is the savings programme for 2023. Hampshire has had to save 560 million from 2010, but now has to save a further 80 million by 2024. This funding gap will have significant impact on how the authority operates, as there is no excess that is to come. As regards children's services, the figure for 2023 2024 is another 21.3 million which gives this department a cumulative budget cut of £152 million pounds since 2010. The £21.3 million will come from the following. Spending review additional social care funding from the government of £6.1 million. Corporate funding from the county of £5 million. And, and as an aside, this saving has to go alongside the previous savings they haven't managed to save because they have to spend the money. Savings to current services, 10,176,000. The latter savings cover 19 different work areas where children's services are changing, modifying service delivery with some post reductions. However, not in the area of social workers because they need every one of those because of the increase in demand. There are reductions in service delivery, but the statutory requirements are still being met. So the service has not hit the buffers yet but there is little or no room for them to go forward. The extra government funding for social services that everybody's talked about will not fund the increase in demand for social care, nor the increases in costs. It only funds the gap. So the future of this service, like other areas of the council, are in danger of not delivering the quality of service Hampshire residents are used to. Central government funding cuts to local government, if not reversed, will have radical and serious impacts for residents of Hampshire. And just to put this in perspective, with the £20, taking over that £20 that they gave to Universal Credit, uh, and many of those people who get that are uh, lower paid working people, and the other one, on other benefits. Add to that, the uh, increase in national insurance, which will affect the lower paid people portion more than those who work with more money. And the devastating news about the increase in power, the requirement of support for Hampshire Council will increase, but they don't have the money to do it because the government's cuts are so dramatic, it is that their, their philosophy has always been little government. So uh, the future is challenging uh, members and chairman, but uh, that our role, uh, my, my, my colleagues, is to fight for the people of Hampshire to try and get that council to tackle the government, because it's the government, their own government, that's cut in. And that's something they just can't seem to get their heads around, but we have to do that. Guess all good. Thank you. We'll move on to the um, district council reports. And we'll start um, from the beginning of the alphabet today. So, Councillor Mark Clark first. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councillor Beck Clark. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I mean, I know some of my district colleagues will cover some items, so I won't um, duplicate those. Um, there's been um, General Purposes and Finance Committee and Planning for Me, and also Safeguarding Training for all district councillors that I've attended. And there's been some casework on. Um, opening of shared communal spaces and some of the NFDC um, owned housing developments in the parish. Um, but as I say, I don't want to duplicate that. <coughs> so that's enough for me. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Councillor Bell. Oh, nothing to report here. Thank you. Um, Councillors. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I attended the parking standards uh, meeting and a lot of things are going to be put to the next meeting. Um, also attended the Environmental Open Scrutiny Committee where um, I've um, set under the second councillor way in uh, asking them to declare climate emergency. Um, I've been in touch with uh, the District Council regarding Applemore 
Recreation Centre in that people had their cars damaged and when it came to trying to get some help, they were told that the new um, people had taken over couldn't help because it was a, a password to get into the CCTV. So I chased that up and I hope we we're getting somewhere with that. So that's quite sad really for a young girl that just bought a car, insured it and lost everything, a thousand pound claim. So that was quite interesting. We'll see what um, else transpires from the recreation centre in that way. Thank you very much, Councillor Osborne. Um, Councillor Adamsway. I'm really very sorry. Um, unfortunately, I have quite a lot of work with which I can. I attended the community partnership over the scrutiny panel last Tuesday and a presentation from the State and Forest Partnership team who shared that they were looking for scam champions at the to help engage, recognise and support vulnerable people who may be the victims of these awful scams at parish level. I will seek more information from officers. There will also be a State of the New Forest webinar again later this year. We also have an update on the partnership's focus for the year, including the work they've been undertaking on the key issues of domestic abuse, drugs and alcohol harm to vulnerable people. There is to be a focus more on the victims than the perpetrators and support to those families in need with multi-agency work. We were told, sadly, that uh, domestic abuse reports have notably increased, with lockdown making it harder for victims to seek support. It has been and remains a priority partnership within the district, uh, and there's a website with links to all those seeking guidance and advice for over 160,000 kids. We also advise there's been drop off in reports for victim based 55 and over compared to 36 to 45 age bracket. And work is being undertaken to enable this older age range to seek support within the district. Inspector Helen Andrews also presented to the panel some questions. She advised on the district priorities and the focus on adherence to COVID 19 duties. Um, she also shared something that quite astonishing that our police have to beat for money to help challenge away for issues such as drugs and drugs related harm to me. And she referenced this as another area of, in another area of the forest where it's a key priority. And others, as she said, theft from vehicles and car parks and seasonal crimes. There is going to be a county line spoken <coughs> on the 9th and 16th of October, uh, and again, uh, domestic abuse again remains a key focus. And um, she admitted to us that today she always had more officers and shared with us that they are normally over 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, 35 officers and 20 PTSOs of the entire district, obviously they're all working at the same time, and also dog and response units. And I do understand some students are being friends up as well. One of the other councillors asked why they aren't bodies on the beat, and she did advise that we do generally try and keep officers in place where they are needed. Um, and I asked her about dwelling burglaries, which she told me had reduced but remained a priority. And she did also appreciate the good work that the East Associates of Handling Trust in, in our neck of the woods, um, and also emphasised the value of importance of 101, which I know that the likes of support of the focus on. The portfolio holder met with the new PCC, Donna Jones, and it's reported that survey she undertook received 3,000 responses, which actually didn't really love from Hampshire. Um, and that the police visibility remains a worry for residents, and efforts to be more officers by 2023, current numbers being 3,300 and 185 SCs. Uh, it was clarified that there will be 600 new officers expected in the district. And should have an even spread through the county and take account of net rights. Her priorities were shared with the panel, including rape conviction rates, court backlogs, rural crime, ASP, and a review of the local service. And she tends to be highly visible to the public and a focus on zero tolerance to knife crime, especially carrying as carrying an offensive weapon in ports of prison. She also has other uh, commendable priorities, but the role, the role in open popular, I hope all this tough talk honestly backed up some actual results. Um, I, and as it's a political role, most of the, the panel that she sits on is made up of other politicians, and I hope that there's proper scrutiny on that panel to challenge this role. Um, we were also presented by the CAB, because we had to discuss the funding agreement for 2022 to 2025. It was recommended that we supported three years that went up by inflation from 185,895 to 195,306 pounds per year. Now these figures are 44,000 and 19,000 down from the 2019 to 2020 financial support 
profit, which reduced year on year, again, 1921, and again down from the previous annual grant of over, just over a quarter of a million. The Chief Officer, Alison Talbot, spoke passionately about the amazing hard work and support the services of the New Forest residents, including here in Pine Lipton, especially during the 18 months of the pandemic before being there. They helped 5,600 people with 14,000 issues throughout this time, with only one full time staff member and six part time, and only 50 volunteers to take over two, about two years to be trained. They often provide two days a week, just purely for volunteer, and there are seven staff connected to funded projects only. For example, the 10 food garden projects we know about, the milling case workers, debt advisors, and more, are part of the varied vital work they do. Last time out, NFPC asked CAB to review their delivery model and make changes to reduce their outgoings as part of a three year agreement for funding. I say that I was, this is not something I was comfortable with and shared with this as the panel, but CAB agreed to this and went above and beyond to ensure council support. However, the CAB deal with many issues that otherwise would fall under the district's responsibilities and the guidance and knowledge provided on items of debt advice, mental health, relationships, housing, finance, energy, supporting disabled residents, employment rules, and more, is this key partner for our authority, especially in dealing with issues around housing and benefits. So I spoke against the recommendation as it's clear that I felt we were reducing, agreeing to reduce the funding at a time when the service was busier, with significant increase in workload, and utilising the needs of more than ever. Uh, Ms. Talbot made it clear that the funding was much needed, but they still face serious challenges because there's no guaranteed funding stream from the government. And while they can bid for funding, that's not guaranteed, and NFC can provide emergency support, they remain in a precarious position. Not to forget the staff being you know, a very small number, and that's quite a heroic job to do. I propose that we revert back to the previous three year programme funding as an acknowledgement of the value of the service and to provide financial security for them to undertake as much needed support. When it came to vote, I abstained along with my Lib colleague, Councillor Rackham, and two of my Conservative colleagues. But the recommendations of capital were supported. I do hope to make this a full council. We were also told, sorry, uh, that the food safety team will plan their resources to revert back to normal practice. They have a valuable role in high workload. Did, and did you know that there's a national shortage of environmental health officers, which is another backlog that they're impacting? That was, that was shared, and they are you know, struggling to, to find people all over, all over the country. We received an update the previous takeover of the leisure centres, mainly a positive spin, although reference to the vast extent of the work and the vast extent of payroll implementation for the staff affects my understanding that it is all very perfect. They advised the centre to put busy week by week and 24% growth in membership. However, councils did acknowledge this is post pandemic, so obviously we have to watch the space. I also visited Apple on a Saturday morning earlier uh, this week. I found it pretty quiet and the member members used to be quite a hectic venue, so that was again something that uh, I hope to see improve. A contract working group will be set up to evaluate the partnership, and the Learn to Swim program will be moving from 44 to 50 weeks per year, and work to be planned for several centres, including Applemore, um, and there was no reference by the when the centre had to close in recent months. We also have an update on different golf course and my times management. There's been 47% utilisation of the course in the past few months, Green fee income is significant with high playing and custom. Um, food, beverage, and wedding bookings are starting to return, and we've had new membership, but I'm not sure if that's in the area. My time provides their uncertain over participation in the colder months, and I suggest that they need to be more proactive and ensure they're reduced spare team times and we can deal with promotions, especially to younger residents, because I'm high start to play in when I was uh, 11, even before Malcolm took them again. There is no evidence yet, yet effort is being made in the area, and my quote will be raised for a contract manager and may be answered for the upcoming plans, because they will be presenting to the council their plans for the future on October 4th. There is a lease review next year, and they are preparing a five-year investment programme. Also, working groups will be set up for public convenience, health and wellbeing, litter policy, they will be using this policy, uh, and to see grants and customer service, and I did ask if these could be more accessible on Zoom. So the very next day, I went to Housing Home, which is open panel. Uh, the next, uh, we had an interesting um, debate where a resident came with concerns that local homes being brought over the second home or area of B&B style properties and the impact of having in the local area. 
The changes from three bed to five bed homes to encourage more tourism, I mean, to many new forest residents who didn't leave the area, and in case of purpose speaking, possibly close to businesses. And this did give food for thought as we need to encourage sustainable tourism in the district and also the economy, and all, but not the behest of much needed affordable housing. This will be investigated further and will go to the coming committee at NFDC and its officers looking at in more detail. We also had a private sector housing update. Uh, April 20 to March 21, 161 property inspections were carried out in 42 counties of one hazards and 167 disability grants uh, completed. The low normal levels, but the district is supporting the new forest disability service with hospital charters. The empty home strategy has gone free, which I mentioned in the previous meeting, that's for council and it's a approved as asbestos and policy as well for social housing. The council also shared that due to their change in their supply chain, which was renewed in 2019, which cost the council a million a year, with an 82 spent out of the local trade businesses around the area, they now have got one business, uh, Travis Perkins. So therefore, they shared the benefits in that, a 5.8% saving, and the improvement in the carbon footprint for the council. However, we also shared the challenges during the pandemic, such as Brexit, life price fluctuations, um, within the market have meant that the agreed, the agreed price we had on timber has gone up by 4%. Um, and there is also a social value for local causes as part of this agreement, uh, which is 10,000. So any ideas welcome where they can uh, spend it. I also ask questions of officers about resident scrutiny with regards to our housing tenants, especially following that there's going to be a charter for social housing white paper from the government. Engagement is key for our residents, we are their landlords and must give them a voice. There is a tenant involvement group in all the residents' panels, and I have asked about our parish's representation on these, and I'm awaiting a response that can also spread the entire, entire distance. And there is lots of resident tenant interest, so they do task and finish groups as well, um, to set for those who don't wish to go the way. There'll be more information on this on the YouTube meeting from about 15 minutes onwards, if you do want to watch this and record them speaking. Um, there was a homelessness update for the district as well. There were 177 placements in the last 12 months, with 191 people moved on from emergency accommodation. There are 44 households currently in emergency accommodation, including 12 families and 30 single people with a even mix of genders. We have 104 residents who managed to secure accommodation in the last six months and a further 16 in 12 months. There are currently reported as four lost sleepers in the district. And there will be bringing in a replacement for homelessness triage officer next month, and the mental health nurse in partnership with mental health services for two weeks in the street. The rusty prevention volunteers are being advertised, and as we are well aware, um, one Afghan family has an indigenous private rented accommodation in the district. Hyde has 137 applications for housing, which is fifth in the district and a drop from fourth in the last quarter. Dinton and Dinton Perlin has 65, which makes it seventh highest. Totten remains the highest of 225. That's 43% of current applications are for one bed homes and 34% of two bed properties, and half of the applicants are for the fan for organization. 12.7% of the district by FDC letters have been in Hyde, and 2.3% have been digital from DP, and that's second and level, respectively. And the majority of properties there have been one or two bed. And lastly, I genuinely thought Councillor Mark was going to say this, sorry, sorry for spoiling the fun there, but NEPC have tendered and selected powers for the building contractor for the six home site on Maid Cross Road. And they are actually bidding funding from Home Zealand to help develop the site. There are other projects on the go, but none that are in our parish at this stage. Overall, NEPC are planning to hit 550 of their 600 charges. And very my apologies. Thank you, Councillor Wade. And Councillor Wade, over to you. Thank you, Mark. I feel so humble. How can I follow that? Sorry, so many so things. Mine is the number one bit, it's very short and it's very worse. Um, it's been quite a busy uh, this is month with the other planning meeting, which again had no other planning applications. I attended a virtual waste of the village of South Africa group, along with Philip, as well as cabinet meetings, which were either dictators. Uh, interests are covered in any item discussed. In addition, I'm attending the Public Standards Meeting, the Environment the Sustainability Panel, and the Green the Housing Panel. Clearly, I'll need to spend an hour talking about those next time. Right, um, however, it's the full council meeting uh, where supported by council I put forward a new climate emergency option to the district 
council instead. It was based upon the concern in the report of global warming from the IPCC, International Panel on Climate Change, which makes it very clear that unless we do something now to retain the status quo, and that's having a negative impact on climate change, by reducing carbon emissions, that will still affect the climate badly, or have a two degree rise in temperature, which will affect both agriculture and health. That means parts of the world will become uninhabitable and we won't be able to afford them. The potential from the, from the IPCC report paints a picture that makes the pandemic look like a cold, right? the impact on humanity. The chairman of well known climate denial of carbon emissions, uh, having anything to do with climate change, refused to let the read get out. He showed his disdain and buy for something he doesn't agree with. However, the leader of the council, with a more recent approach, said it would be discussed at a cabinet meeting. It's based upon the clear evidence we see it was daily on TV of the effect of climate change on our planet. Is our hope NFTC and the sign NFTC administration is now taking issues seriously. Thank you, Councillor Wade. Um, I'll, I'll just um, add mine at the end. Um, so on the 20th, I went to the Sustainable Waste Management Group and the groups reported to Cabinet on the 6th of October, then on to Council. And this is renegotiating the Joint Municipal Waste Strategy. This is the response to the Government National Waste Strategy of two, um, 2018, <coughs> the Joint Municipal Waste Management Strategy involving Hampshire County Council and the 14 regional authorities. On the next day, um, along with Councillor Wade, I went to the Green Housing and we had um, feedback on the ground source heat pump initiative. Uh, 51 local authority properties were identified to be upgraded with access to government grants. To date, 11 properties in East Boulder have been selected for a first phase. The September deadline has been moved to March. And a new building development of 12 or 13 homes in Tottenham has been selected as a model for a future homes standard pilot scheme. The idea is that this will act as a showcase. It's hoped that the contract will be ready by December. Government was due to publish the future homes standard guidance, um, but this has now been delayed by a few years. And that um, concludes the district council reports. So we go on to outside bodies, please. Do we have any? Thank you, Councillor Osborne. Now, the stakeholder of the Pipe Wars Fishbowl, and through that, I've uh, made some really good contacts because we've had quite a few complaints about the GP service in our area. Um, and it's that day looking at me all that time. Um, this is happening. So I've got a, a meeting with uh, a lady called Catherine Fowle, who is um, Deputy Director of the Clinical Commission in South and West Community and Primary Care, just to bring up the fact that um, Marchwood um, surgery is shut on a Wednesday and half of Monday now. Everyone's getting sent from there down to do the Palu. Um, blood tests, we haven't got any uh, files to take the blood tests in. And I just said through those two things, and then that has came to where they're offering a meeting with her and Charlie Bisley, who's the director of uh, GPs here. And um, Philip is actually joining me for that meeting next week. So we'll get back on that next week. Thank you. Do we have any other? Oh, um, thank you, Councillor Baird. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, from the pier, uh, as you said, the Rock Pier is a great success. Uh, I've been in talks with the Chairman and the Secretary to start uh, planning for next year and ways in which to improve it to even get more footfall into the village to uh, uh, assist the traders to get better business from it all. Hopefully that will work. Uh, as you know, the uh, first carriage and motor unit are now back on track. The second carriage is in the workshop being deconstructed. The guys in the peer workshop are now working on the chassis which needs a lot of work, there's a lot of rust in it. Uh, in the shed, we already started constructing the new timber work for it. Um, so that's ongoing. I attended uh, Ashley and Lee's <laughs> thank you to the community for the fundraising to get the ferry back in the water. 
again, they are thankful for the help uh, from the parish. Um, uh, so that was quite a success. It's a nice day as well. I'm looking to see about that not just promoting the pier, the train and the ferry, but also, as I say, to get more people into the village to promote the village as well. And in talking to the chairman, he would be quite happy if the council so desire for him to come and attend council and give a presentation. Good idea. Thank you. Good idea. Uh, as well, you know, obviously, it's a new chair now, not yes. the beginning, it's now Anthony Smith. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Do we have any more outside body reports? Okay, thank you very much. Um, we now move to the public forum. Um, I have received um, a letter. There's been um, get this right. Yes, there we are. Um, there's been the sighting of um, Japanese knotweed, and that's been reported to the council. And um, we are currently um, getting that um, sorted and, and dealing with that. So that that is happening as we speak. Um, so um, that's uh, very helpful to have that all pointed out. Um, we have no more written. Um, so we're on to, um, to the report. Do you have any questions? Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. We move on then, please, to um, councillors taking questions from councillors. Thank you, Councillor Paul. And my question is to Councillor Alatway. First of all, can I commend you for such a comprehensive report? Um, <coughs> it's um, related to the New Forest Partnership team. Um, to give the lot from the challenge for steel. Uh, I start to explore how we can support waterside victims of domestic abuse. Uh, would there be an appropriate person to contact the New Forest Partners team? to engage in dialogue with support process? Yes, firstly, um, those meetings are only every quarter, so you should only happen to do that once every three, every three months, so I do apologise. Um, it is quite burdened, so um, I'll send you the details. Thank you very much, Councillor. Do you have any other um, questions? Yes, Councillor Carr. Uh, it's a question to uh, Councillor Wade about the CAN service. Um, is it getting better or is it getting worse? And how long are the wait? Um, okay. Uh, the the CAM service has been pretty awful. It was something like 28 weeks to get an appointment and then 14 weeks to get treatment. Now, I can't quote the exact figure what it is now, but it's not improved a lot. The, 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 the problem is that the demand for the CAM service has increased exponentially. As more and more uh, issues with, with children and adolescent health, mental health, have been identified. And um, it's not fit for purpose, to be honest, never has been. So they do have a massive amount of investment from, uh, uh, from the government, often the National Health Service, to, to increase it. But to do that, they need to recruit a humongous number of people, it's over 100 extra extra staff. So far they've recruited, for, they've offered 79 positions and they've recruited 40. But the, the reality is every year they come to the committee, every year we get this, we're going to do better next year. Anyway, until we actually got the funding, which was last year, there was no chance of anything getting through. But now they've got the funding and it still hasn't been through because they haven't got recruited all the people. Even when they recruit people, they've got to be trained and they've got to look at how they operate holistically because there are certain fundamental problems in camps. What they are doing, and particularly in the forest, they are starting to work in schools and they're having uh, outreach mental health workers almost that are going to deal with certain issues. But there is still a strong waiting list for uh, uh, treatment. Sorry, for, for referral and treatment. And their challenge is to, to get this down. And every year they come to the children and young people select committee and we go through this and they will do it again. They said, you've got to come back next year. 
and, and, and we really get the town. This is what we're doing politics. Everybody really goes laid into the power expression because the service they deliver is fundamentally needed by, by young people, and they're not delivering it. You know, and they can't be allowed to just, just get away with it. We've got to get on top. We do. We all get on top of it. Not literally. But to get to try and get that resolved. Uh, and bit by bit, it will improve. I, I can't say how long because they've not managed to do it so far. But if they recruit the number of people they say they're going to recruit, I would expect to see an improvement in the next year or two years. You know what I'm Um, can I can I just chip in on the same on the same subject, Dr. Councillor Wade? Um, clearly, it's it's a crisis, um, and it's going to take a while to get to the point where in, enough recruitment um, is in place to make a difference. Yeah. Are there any suggestions for how things can be uh, at least alleviated to some extent in the meantime? For example, we have. Um, in the Handy Trust, we have people who have training. Obviously, it's not necessarily at the same level as people who need it at an extreme level of need, but there, there will be degrees of, of need. And if training can be given, most schools, for example, have support staff who work alongside the teaching staff. Surely it's not beyond the wit to be able to provide training for people to do some of the work that's the kind of more low level work that you don't need um, specialists. The fundamental challenge to is that we are dealing with young people with specialist needs, right? And not all of them, when they get referred to camps, actually need treatment, but it takes a specialist. To be able to make that diagnosis. Uh, and I, I, you actually have some wonderful people who work in schools and work in areas that can support uh, these, sort of, these, these sort of issues, but they are not qualified to make that black and white diagnosis. So they need suitably trained people to be able to do it. What they have done, and what we did this last year, they took autism out of it and gave that to subcontracted autism cases to another organisation to deal with. So they haven't to worry about autism. That's dealt with by, I can't remember which one it is, but I can find out for them that wants to that, but that's dealt by, by someone else. Uh, and they are, they have to look to subcontract, if I may use a business term, some of their work into other areas. And they're looking to do, to try and prevent the number of referrals by doing some early intervention work. Because they can't handle the number of referrals. So if you reduce the number of referrals, you haven't got a bigger problem. But it is a massive case. But, uh, but the fundamental issue is we are identifying more and more mental health issues in young people that we didn't know about before or, or, or weren't being dealt with before properly. And, and they, they weren't geared up to this at the beginning. And that's why we have a huge backlog and it is huge. It's, it's thousands of cases. But they are doing that. I think they are doing their best to try and fix it, uh, and, but it's going to take time. Thank you. So I, let me go back to this. Actually, following up on what Malcolm has said, I'm aware that they have contracted out um, to Cycon is the is, is is the company in Kent. So it's a very um, hands off process whereby um, you know, due to the fact that there's lots of remote GP appointments. Um, youngsters may not actually even see anybody for months and months and months. It's all done remotely via questionnaires. Um, and um, obviously there are some caveats in all the um, information, say if you're in desperate, desperate need, but they're mainly charities, the ones that we all know of, Samaritans. Um, you know, if, if kids are desperate, that's where they have to go. Um, but otherwise they have to wait an enormous amount of time. It's really quite... Quite desperate situation. No. Councillor. Yeah, my question is to the county councillor again. Um, what feedback have you had about the upper Mullins Lane resurfacing? Firstly, it's better to have something there, but I, that's a low, low level because the feedback I've had has been quite negative. And driving across it, it it's a bit patchy. If I'm being polite, and can I ask that you take back the residents' feedback? 
and now just feedback please to the highways team because it's, it's not good enough it's needed in that area obviously for one of the most well used roads in the parish but it's actually quite shoddy work so could i ask you to take this back to the highways officer please okay right let me give you a proper answer the previous contracts were so bad so bad that they filled the top hole in just um, across the alley. That's a bit of frost. And the local bed didn't have to repair because you the side of the road. So there's this big chunk of road inside the huge bottle. So this new contractor is not that much better. Okay. But the point, and I've been asking me this, I have to say, until the road breaks up, I can't go back to the couch and say it's not good enough. Just because it doesn't look nice, it's <laughs> not technical enough for me to get the, 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 the highway engineers to turn around and dig it up again. Now, realistically, if, if, if the, um, the surfacing breaks up, and being this has been serious, right, I can go back to them uh, and, and, and castigate them and, and get it looked at again. But just because it doesn't look as though it's any good, isn't actually good enough to go back to get it resurfaced. It's actually got to break down. I said that we get it. If the road surface starts to crack and break down, I can go back to them. But just because it looks like it's going to break down, or it's not perfectly smooth, it's not, I won't, it won't get anywhere. They won't do anything. So it's better, we've got to deal with these issues because Hampshire roads are in an appalling state. You know, that to get them to resurface it in the first place, positive, right? In fact, it's not up to everybody standard. Okay, well, we all know that no traffic engineer, aren't we? Anyway, but the point is, at least it's better than it was, right? Now, if it breaks down again, I'll go back to the state needs to be resurfaced. But until it breaks down, I can't ask them to insert it just because you think it's going to break down. This, I'm sorry that they're very negative, but I'm being realistic. For so many of them to require repair all across the county, Right, they've got to have a real problem to deal with. Then it goes on the list, and that's not the answer you want to hear. But that's an honest answer. My issues with county highways, not not you. I appreciate getting this on the list. I mean, I have to hold my hand up. That's what they tell me. But give it a few months, and I suggest please take a close look at this because yeah, I thought it's still happening. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think that brings us to the end of. Um, Councillor questions. So we'll move on, please, now to item 10, which is to approve the draft communications policy as presented. Chairman? Yes. yes. Actually, to approve the recommendations of the General Purpose and Finance Committee. Sorry to contradict you. As the chair, we have to stand up for my committee. Now. It's on the page, I don't think I've got that bit um, reproduced online, so I do make your part. That's okay. There are two recommendations actually. The first one is to move the draft communications policy, uh, and the second one is to note building consultants have been constructed to consider the structural condition of the parish hall roof and repairs needed. He has also reviewed the workshop and the revert with site improvements or all improvement suggestions should be. But yeah, the first one is, is the, uh, the draft. Over to you, Well, I'm doing this better, am I? Apparently. Right. Um, okay. Well, let's move then, please, to the draft communications policy. Um, do we have any? Do we have any comments before I, I put it to um, put it to the vote? Yes, Councillor Wade. First, well, maybe just to thank Councillor Mark Clark for his work on it. Really. Um, obviously, I went through this GPNF, so I can't have any comments that I haven't already shared. In that panel, we agreed. So um, I will also be supporting it, but I just want to thank you, uh, Councillor Mark Clark, for your work on this. Thank you very much. Do I have a proposal? Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you very much. And can we vote on um, approving this draft? Thank you very much. That looks like you unanimous. Thank you. And moving on then. Um, this is to note that a um, building consultant has been contracted to consider the structural condition of the parish hall roof and repairs needed, and also view the workshop and will um, revert the site improvement suggestion shortly. So you just need to note that. 
Do I have any comments on that, councillors? Thank you, Boris. By the staff, Jim. I think it was in good work by the parish council team. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Right. We are going to move on then, please, to item 11, which are councillor appointments. Um, so first of all, to note that the relevant legal electoral notice has been officially posted regarding the casual vacancy that has arisen for Langdown Ward. Um, so that is just the meeting. And we then have um, a number of appointments. Um, first of all, do we have an appointment, two appointments possibly, for the Amenities Committee? The question, Chairman. Okay, I, I wasn't at the last council meeting, um, but but was the um, vacancy? Were we, were we aware of that at the last point? I just wondered if we could say thank you to um, the outgoing councillor for their work um, before we moved on, and also um, knowing that we have a vacancy. I just wanted to check. Um, you know, obviously we don't have a replacement yet, and we presumably want to move some of these spaces for the replacement. So I just wondered how that could work with these ones. Um, and I also just have one general um, just comment to make because um, obviously um, the outgoing councillor Matt Kitcher did did sort of improve our, shall we say, our age demographic. It, you know, it, um, we need to have a. Um, if, uh, no, no. <laughs> Um, and you know, we always encourage councillors across age groups and backgrounds so that we can fully represent the diversity of the parish. And um, the only other question I was going to ask was I know that a district council, um, because councillors have had issues and staff have had issues and we have the pandemic, they have put in place something for councillors and staff. So that if they are struggling for any reason, um, there are resources that all councillors and staff can access, um, which they've seen a need for. Um, and I just wonder if that's something that is available here. I know that you know councillors for various reasons have had stressful times as councillors over the time. And um, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, obviously it's been in the news that the councillor that left had you know, it's going to concentrate on their mental health. I just want to make sure that as a council, we do make sure that we look after everyone and at least offer what we need to for any councillor or member of staff to be able to tap into it if they need to. Um, somebody at a district council did actually take their life, didn't they? Which is one of the reasons they um, looked at how they supported councillors. Um, so this isn't recently, I hasten to add, but you know, there is a duty of care there and people can get lost or forgotten and sometimes it's useful to have somewhere outside of the council to um, get support. Um, so that's just my question. Um, right, um, thank you for that. Well, I think it's certainly, certainly that, will, that will need some, some consideration to see um, what there are steps we can take already, but it may be we need to revisit that in the light of um, how things are um, post-lockdown. So thank you for raising that. In terms of um, the councillor, um, you will be aware that um, um, I, I did write to Councillor Kitcher thanking him for his service, his enthusiasm and commitment. Particularly, I think it was a really nice um, uh, opportunity for him to show his um, support at the community awards, for example, and that that was great because he, he, he certainly worked hard um, behind the scenes on that, but also had a public um, um, showcase for his efforts there. So, um, yes, I, I take your point there, absolutely. Um, so, we'll move to the draft. Communications policy. Um, no. we, we, we haven't voted on it yet. So yeah. um, councillor yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Great. Yes, there we go. Oh, no, that's right. We're voting on. Um, do we have any councillors who wish to put themselves forward for um, amenities committee? I 
sorry, I, that was the other point you raised about whether or not um, yeah. a number of our committees are not full strength as it is. So there will certainly be um, opportunity for um, any new councillor um, to, to be considered for a number of committees. Um, thank you. Yes. Just a clarification on point three for the planning committee, obviously the best committee there is. It says <laughs> times one, I understand that we're all slightly at low strength because ideally you'd have nine for that committee. So arguably, even if we had one person join us tonight, we could have the new councillor come and join us as well. Because I know I'm probably being precious, but it's important to be caught and I'd rather have nine to work on. I do appreciate that we've got two NFDC planning who can't be on now. There's, are you deliberately sat there? It's really easy to talk to an NFDC planning group. Um, but yes, yeah, so just clarification, but technically you two are planning rather than one. Can I just comment? Thank you, Alex. I did count up yesterday, and there are actually seven on each committee we have at the moment, and nine are allowed. So there are two spaces on every single committee. Thank you. All right. That's good. Right. Okay. Back to Amina's then. Do we have any um, any um, people wishing to stand for Amina's committee? I'm tempted anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that one for the moment and we'll move on, please, to General Purposes and Finance Committee. Chairman, you're already on it. No, no, I, <laughs> I would like to ask if, if Councillor Lovell would like to join the General Purposes and Finance, being that she comes from a business background, I'm sure she could have great value to, 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 that, to that committee if, if you were. So interesting to talk about. Yes, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Is that your answer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, well that was this genuine. Fantastic. Um, shall we vote on that then, please, councillors, um, before she changes her mind? Um, <laughs> so if you're if you, um, voting for, that looks like it's unanimous. Thank you very much. And then we also have the planning committee. Um, so uh, anyone not currently on planning or on district planning who would like to join the planning? There is a possibility that the uh, council can't explain this. Um, we will be discussing it at a meeting tomorrow that we could reduce one member of the Liberal Democrats on the district planning committee. It's not definite, we can discuss it right now. If we did, it might give the opportunity for, 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 for I'm not saying we want to go off the planning committee, I would love to, but that probably won't. But uh, it, I'm just saying might have an opportunity to add to the parish committee if, if, if one of one of us. Right, I'm, I'm taking it to say we, we could return to this. Yeah, I think so. Right, can I just ask finally if there's anyone here tonight who would like to join the planning? Um, otherwise, well, we'll leave that to a, a later meeting. Do you, do you want me to read as a back of the next council Yes, please. Okay. I can't believe anyone who wants to participate in place. Uh, right, moving on then. These are um, to appoint representatives to serve on the following outside bodies. Um, do we have anyone who would like to um, volunteer for age concern? Was that hand up? Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Ways. Um, do we do we need to uh, approve the second? You can do them all on block if you'd like to. Yeah, I'll propose we give them all. Okay. And um, different allotments fund. Um, this is um, Councillor Delamay. You're going to um, stand on that one. You're, you're happy to do so. so. That's fantastic, thank you very much. Um, Handy Trust, you gave it a try. Are you, are you happy to commit that? I'll propose Sean and then Sean. Fantastic, thank you very much, Councillor Cullen. Um, New Forest uh, Association of Loads. Uh, I'm just wondering if the melody 
Did Melody say she wanted to do the Hand of Trust? Does anyone know? Um, she she did say that um, she would be interested. Um, there is a non-council trustee position also available. So I, I did communicate with Melody to say that Sean had already um, gone along to see what it was like. And I suggested the two of them communicate about that. Um, but there are two trustee positions, is, is my understanding. Thank you. New Forest Association of Local Councils. I'm very happy to stand for that if unless anyone else would like to. She should be the chairman. Excuse me? She should be the chairman or vice chairman in that sense. That's fine, I'm just saying if anyone else wants to. Just back in the Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and Waterside Heritage um, is, is another one. Um, do we have any tables for Waterside Heritage? Thank you, Councillor Burke. Right, we can do this on block. So all of those people who have um, very kindly agreed to stand for those positions. Um, can I have a, a proposal for all of those? I think I would answer the wait. And can I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Osborne. And can we now vote on those on block? Thank you very much. Right, moving on to point D. This is to appoint school liaison councillors up to the following schools. Um, we've got, first of all, um, Greenwood School. I'm very happy to stand for Greenwood School because it's in my ward, unless anyone else is, is absolutely um, desperate to, to do that in one place. Thank you. Um, Oak Lodge School, I'm also um, very happy to, um, to do Oak Lodge unless we have anyone else who's keen. Thank you. Um, Waterside <coughs> Primary School. Um, Alex has put himself forward for that, um, unless anyone else has. Second of all, it makes, makes absolute sense because I've seen his word. Thank you. Have we got a second of those? Thank you. And can we, I have a um, vote on those then, please? Those three. Thank you very much. Right, moving on to item 12. Um, all of these are for noting. Um, so we've got... Um, keys. Keys and keys and keys. That's true. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so we have to note A. Any, any questions? Um, B, to receive an update. Any questions? Right. Can I just say that I know um, Malcolm requested that um, this was split into two years. The finance officer has been, has been away on leave, so it's all done next time. Just to say. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Sorry. The, the COVID financial effect, yeah. he wanted it split into two yeah. years. That will be done for next week. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. And then to receive the bank reconciliation for August, are we happy to, to note that? Yes. Yeah. Just quickly to note and say thank you to the officers, particularly uh, Sean and Beverly, for frankly a successful audit. Uh, it means a lot, and for all officers of the council. And it, so I just would like to say thank you. It's very important to the council and the officers of the council. Okay, thank you. And then moving on to D, it's to approve the accounts for payment for August. Um, so, can I have um, a proposer? Thank you, Councillor Fairhead. Seconder. Thank you, Councillor Wade. And can we all vote our approval or otherwise for D? Approval. That's everyone. Thank you very much. Yes, and um, I'll echo Alex's thanks to the team for a fantastic job there. Right. At this point, um, we move to item 13, and we need to um, agree to the exclusion of press and public. Thank you very much for having me.